Welcome to your favorite comic book YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be looking at Richard Corbin's Murky World today, but first I do want to let you guys know that Jimmy and I are going to be making an appearance at Heroes Con uh, this, this summer, in a couple of weeks actually, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're going to be in that area, swing through, stop by, say hi. Also, uh, at the end of uh, July, last Saturday of July to be specific, Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July is going down. This is an initiative that we started last year where we're taking uh, a bunch of our comp copies of our comics. No Red Room, of course. Uh, old hip hops and things I'm going to be bringing, X-Men comics. And uh, our comic book duplicates that we've received from you guys in the mail, stuff that we might have already had, or just in our digs. We uh, and, you know ended up with doubles. We're putting those in the free little lending libraries in our neighborhood and around the city. Uh, we encourage you to do so also. Hashtag us. Send us the images. Uh, as um, as you do it, and uh, this is a way for us to take a little bit of action to try to introduce new people to the medium of comic books, and uh, you know some of it will stick with the people who might happen upon this stuff. We all discovered comics, you know, in our, in our own ways, and it all happened as a discovery. You know, you find a comic, you read it, you look through it, you dig it, and then you start to seek seek out more. So this is what we can do to to grow this readership. And without further ado. Let's take a look at Murky World. Uh, you, I was still in Japan, or maybe on my way home, and you, you, you were, were showing off on your Instagram that you got this Murky World. And I hit up Daniel Chabin, and I'm like, yo, Dan, am I getting a copy or what? And he's like, oh, yeah, you and Jim like, got, got your copy. So, full disclosure, got these from, from Dark Horse, man, knowing that we're big Richard Corbin marks. So when I said that to him, I'm like, oh, man, can I, can I get a copy too? And uh, he's like, oh, no, yeah, it's on, it's on the way. And I guess maybe for redundancy or something, a couple of days later, a couple more show up. Uh, and they're still in the in the packs here. So Jimmy and I are like, well, let's do something about that, man. Like, let's do something with this. We have two ideas uh, with two copies. With one, anybody out there, uh, we want you to promote the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. And then say like at the end of uh, June, we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll do these giveaways. Uh, we see the coolest promotion from somebody. We don't know what that is. Uh, we've done this with Akira. Um, uh, Punker Mike got got the honors there by creating gr great dioramas and, and uh, cartoonist kayfabe related stuff. We don't know what that is, man. But we'll know it when we see it. Absolutely. We've got a very creative audience, so uh, surprise us. Absolutely. And with the... Uh, other murky world this is going to a king kayfabe or somebody who's our biggest supporter um for the channel what we're going to do is uh take everybody's name uh off off of the king kayfabe list we're going to uh create a document that's numbered we're going to keep it private so as to not put people's information out maybe 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 their job at lockheed martin uh would be in jeopardy if they found out they were king kayfabers <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to just uh, have a random number generator, look at the name that's next to it, pull, pull maybe two names just in case if somebody has it or whatever. Uh, if you do have it, when we hit you up at, at the King K Favor level, um, maybe we'll just give you something else. We, we got a lot of cool stuff here. Um, so that's, that is one thing that we're going to do. Without further ado, Jimmy, let's just let's crack this baby open. Murky World. It's the first volume of the complete Richard Corbin library that Dark Horse is promising us, and it is uh, it's the latest work uh, from uh, the great Richard Corbin. And uh, man, it is it, it it's it's got some odd stuff going yeah. on here artistically. I was looking at this piece and I was like, man, I don't even know exactly what I'm looking at. So many pages, Ed, going through this, I had that feeling. This episode is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels will give you access to our videos before anyone else sees them to give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. And at the King Kayfabe level, you actually sit in on our recording sessions. This episode is also brought to you by the books that we make. You see our bibliography in front of you right now. In addition to all of these books, Ed Piscor's Red Room Crypto Killers, the new season of Red Room is now out. Issue one is available now. Issue two cover here. There are also a clip of variant covers by Ed, Peach Momoko, me, and many other great artists. 
the other big book that Ed is releasing later this year, Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips in one handsome 500 plus page volume, including over 100 pages of new material. That'll be out in time for the holidays. Got to pre-order it now so Fanographics knows how many to print. There's also an omnibus collection of X-Men Grand Design coming out later this year. Again, pre-order that one today. Let them know how many you need because some of the X-Men Grand Design three volumes are out of print. So get that one big, handsome, collected volume. My next big book later this summer, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This is available for pre-order now. Collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Also available and back in print from Image Comics. You can also pick up my Hulk Grand Design with the fluorescent green cover. You cannot miss it. As well as Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel. And now back to our program. Yeah. And, and it really makes me wonder because this is colored by he and his daughter. The first... Um, version of this appears in Dark Horse Presents in black and white, yeah. which is reprinted in the back, so you kind of get an idea of a little bit of insight into how he's working, but I still don't understand. I wonder if this is all digital, if it's mostly digital. I can't tell, to be honest. Right. It's uh, it's it's wild stuff, but it reads like pure Corbin, and he's one of these creators that has internalized the Robert E. Howard and the H.P. Lovecraft into his his entire being man and there's no irony to it like you are getting a tour through the murky world with this guy as your kind of <laughs> as, as your kind of cipher it's sort of like den you know it's it's like perfecting the den story in in a certain way great idea great sort of character designs and imagery along the way you have your interlocutor character who's who's the other real you know uwatu the watcher of the thing and these are eight-page chapters, so you'll see that murky world come up every yeah. eight pages to kind of give you an idea of what chunk, how, how this was serialized. Little cliffhangers uh, with, with each. It's stuff like this that's like, man, he didn't even draw ears on that. It's really bizarre, some of the distortions. But doesn't it look like you could imagine that he sculpted this and is like looking at that sculpture? I say that because there is a video online when he received the presidency or whatever you call it of uh, Angoulême. And he's like doing a little thank you. And there's a cut that is on a, like a curio that has all kinds of uh, his little super sculpty fucking heads. And, and they look like this. The way the color is modeled, like especially like whenever you see it on muscles and things like that, uh, there'll be spines and just like a really hard kind of edge to certain of these muscles. And I just wonder like if he's digitally masking and painting that stuff digital. Yeah. Um, really an interesting use of color no matter how he's getting to that point but they feel so sculpted you know like it's times it's almost like a 3d model it's so believably round yeah big shouts to clem robbins one of one of the all-star letterers who uh this is a font sure but it is a great congruent font that looks nice on uh, a richard corbin comic um i know clem robbins from uh being the preacher letterer mm -hmm. and he used a completely different hand style then this is a way more organic kind of vibe uh it's a rapidograph and and you know that very deadline but it's very matter of fact and it really allows the art to to uh, shine i appreciate seeing the range that corbin brings to things too even just like the details of your panel borders on this one page you've got open panel you have this kind of like thinner pen line kind of border a thicker border and then panels that have two or three sides are bordered into open it doesn't feel like corbin has much of a plan when he's putting these strips together because like we just saw you know just a zombie shows up 50 pages in and was never sort of explained before our main driving force is this horse is uh the main character's horse is kind of his friend and uh he gets in prison there's another one of those wild distortions uh basically he's trying to catch up with this horse throughout a lot of this story it makes me wonder how he assembles a lot of his stories, because if you read The Den Origin, yeah. it starts out in, I think, is it Grim Death? It's it's an underground comic is the first appearance of Den. And then it's a two-parter in Metal Orlant. Yeah. And then it's a 12-parter in Heavy Metal. So I wonder if he's worked a lot that way, where it's like, here's a concept. Oh, here's more space. Let me do some more with this concept I've been thinking about. And it feels like this may be a similar development. Don't that look straight out of um, Mutant World? 100%. It's he's, it's a it's a mashup of all his stuff. The digital color, it feels real bleeding edge because like I, I feel like that's what this stuff is, man. Yeah, um, it feels real bleeding edge, 
uh, when I first saw it, because this is the o- my only experience with Murky World. I don't have any of that Dark Horse stuff. I don't have any of those heavy metal issues. And I was going to sort of lay some of it on um, Jose Villarubia, who has nothing to do with nothing. this volume. Yeah, I asked him about that. And uh, because because it's like, oh man, maybe he, he oversaturated, like there's there's something to it. But this is just late period Corbin. This is what you get. Corbin starts doing digital stuff in like the early 90s, mm-hmm. which is amazing to me because he's not a young man at that point, And yet he's like embracing whatever technology shows up. Always been an innovator. Yeah. I mean, especially where, where color is concerned. But these this is a, an unmistakable Richard Corbin color palette, to be sure. I didn't read it all yet. I read like four or five chapters, so I can't speak too much on the story. I like where it's going. It's just uh, a tour through the murky world, basically. That's exactly what it is. Very much like a road trip. Yeah. He hooks up with some different characters from you know segment to segment. Things happen uh, that move him to different places and align him with different characters. Uh, like I said, the the horse seems to be a <laughs> classic Corbin character design. There, the horse seems to be a through line. You know, of, of two guys is or Tugget is the main character and he's just trying to get back to that horse that he's friends with. But you get the Corbinisms, you know, the giant monsters that nobody does them better than him. They just don't. Yeah. And uh, you have all of those kind of qualities. You know, there are these two twin sisters who are like Coliseum gladiators that <laughs> right. escape. Those bald uh, uh, That Tugget man. helps escape, you know, and then reunites with later on. Um, so it's just all of these great staples. And when you read like Mike Mignola's... Uh, intro to this or you read quotes from Mobius or Alan Moore or Guillermo del Toro describing his work it's about how singular it is and his vision is yes. and that's what you get here you're going into Richard Corbin world it, it shouldn't be murky world it should be Corbin world right and uh, that's what all these books are that's what Absolutely. every Corbin co- comic is and it just comes through you know so I like I think you know he has he has legendary comics but we get murky world as the first one <clears throat> and I think part of that is because it's all assembled. It's all together. It's modern digital co- comics. Um, you know, it, digitally prep files. We could put this one together pretty quick and easy. Uh, Den is going to be next, I think. I saw I that think in the pre orders right. and I think stuff. Two volumes, maybe. Yeah. And those are getting that Jose Villarubia recolor treatment, uh, touch ups, mm-hmm. uh, where he's. Very faithful. He's been a fun inst to follow because, like, he'll post like printed page of you know whatever is- issuance of or edition of Den, and then like the revised page next to it. And it's good. It's really interesting to just see like choices that are being made and and he's show- how you approach and that. he's showing how some of the pages weathered. So he's showing like how they degraded over time because of like the weird materials that Corbin is using. Another thing that Via Ruby has been doing is showing. Uh, he's been kind of doing his recolor of class classic silver age you know showing the super saturated shit things that we crap on uh of modern reprints showing a scan of the original and then doing his version and like his color sense is just so good because he grays up the paper a little bit grays up the color the the one thing that he does fuck up on is the thing that we talk about where he keeps that black line black Mm. and so like jose if you're watching this man just 80% 80% opacity will probably take care of that. You don't got to do much, but that black is too divorced. But he did good work on this uh, Corbin stuff from the things that I've seen online. I just love that he's having the conversation publicly of like, hey, everybody, look at reprinting color. Listen, we've been having that conversation <laughs> yeah, for we fucking have. years. <laughs> right. If only somebody uh, at, the, at the publishing <laughs> side of it would listen. Yeah. There it is, Murky World, man. Uh, just this re- is a great character too. This this Cyclops works as like a taxi. This this character hires the Cyclops to basically take him, lead his like cart to whatever place he's going. But I just love that it's I don't know, twenty foot tall, you know, topless Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember there was that show called Monsters in uh, the eighties, and it was that that era where there was so much O Henry, Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt shows. And and the opening intro would be this like almost like Danny Elfman kind of like orchestral score from in my mind's eye. It's over top of a city, like a like a suburban neighborhood. The camera goes down a crane shot and goes into the living room, and it's like a family of cyclopses watching TV. And uh, one of the cyclopses looks like that. That's amazing. Like a whole yeah, family I do, of cyclopses. I do have a little memory of that. I think it only lasted like a season. That's or... it. Yeah, yeah. Like that that uh, that whole method of storytelling you know had its day in the sun for a little while there look at that rotten ass nipple oh 
<laughs> there are a lot of nipples on display in this book, and very few of them are erotic. I would say zero. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, we saw the ones, like, here, where, like, they're on the side. Like, it's like a side boob, but he puts a fucking nipple on the side. It's real. Yeah, I'm not, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not endorsing it for this. But one thing that's great about this book is that it has some really good back features. So this is the black and white... Uh, I guess it was the way the Dark Horse Presents originally appeared. And if you look, these are later chapters. This is that Cyclops that I pointed at that's damn near the end of the book. Yeah. So the, the chapters were created out of sequence. But also, I look at the black and white and I'm kind of like, is this digital? Because you can see what look like really believable pencil marks in yeah. some of this stuff. And I just don't know the answer to that. Great paper choice for this kind of imagery. Uh, I could imagine massive dot gain. Uh, if you chose the wrong paper yeah, for this for black sure. and white stuff. I wonder about that for like other uh, volumes too, like what kind of paper they'll be doing like Den on. I, I bet example. it's all the same. I think you have to for the color. I think it maximizes the color if it's some sort of finish on top. And then this is the other bonus is the sketchbook, which like, I don't know if I've ever seen Richard Corbin sketch stuff. Yeah, we just saw uh, the Crooked Man stuff, like a couple of sketches that are in like Very, the library yeah. editions. Mm -hmm. But like, is this markers and like... Pencil media, is it digital? And he's playing with brushes? I really can't tell you. That is a great sketch. And the little notes, the little notes are awesome. His you, handwriting is strange. It is, but it's totally legible, and it does make me sad that he doesn't didn't never hand lettered his comics. Yeah. Like I you could read that just fine, you know? Like Great hands. Get to see him doing some hand studies. It talks about like uh, the the biography of him in the very back too is is pretty sharp. It's neat to see him go through these styles too, like hard black and white. Really incredible how much it retains the Corbin, and yet it's every approach you can imagine. Like some of these things, I don't know exactly what media you're looking at there. Yeah, because I, it, I, this doesn't strike me as a page of a sketchbook. This this feels like a smattering of things. Yeah, the you size know, that's, that's very tight shit right here. Right. Yeah, it definitely looks like maybe you're pulling from a bunch of stuff. But, you know, if you're working digital, you'd be doing some of your sketching and developing the, the visuals digitally. And then here, these are original art pages? Mm. If so, once again, what are the materials, Ed? Right. How do you make stuff that looks like this? One of a kind creator, an iconoclast, and one of uh, the favorites of the cartoonist Kayfabe channel. I envision a day where we go through all of his work. Yeah, you know, over time. Check this detail out. So as he goes on to talk about kind of like his publishing history, undergrounds into the Warrens and stuff, self-publishing in the 80s, and then it doesn't do enough business for him. You know, the business wasn't enough to support his family. And that's whenever he starts doing that DC Marvel Dark Horse stuff, which is like, I don't know, early 90s, maybe he starts at Vertigo. And I always wonder about like it's that late. timeline and why he ends up there when he does. And to think that it's some kind of financial result of you know, his work not, not supporting them. I was surprised by that because I always thought like he does a big business in Europe. I just thought that it was, it surprises me that he, his, his work was not enough. And, you know, m because it seemed like he wasn't eager to keep it in print here and maybe there wasn't business to keep it in print here. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah, was surprised I mean, it, by that. It was always hard to, hard to get, hard yes. to find. Like, uh, but so is like a Mobius and so is a Tomo, you know? So like, I always kind of thought but, of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he's, he's, he's English. And you know, like with all the, with all the hyperbole that you hear about France, you Jeff Darrow, like lots of people that I know who deal with that sort of industry, it ain't all roses. It sure. Ain't, it ain't that much. Like, like those guys struggle. And the model is very... Like, it's like you do a 50-page book a year. And that's a lot of eggs in one basket, man. Like, if something doesn't hit, I can see that fucking you up pretty pretty good. But uh, the beauty is that uh, deals were made. Deals were hatched. And Richard Corbin's family is going to be taken care of. Uh, so long as these... Uh, you know, complete Richard Corbin libraries sell well. And uh, I think they're very much worth supporting. The production values are uh, out of this world, man. They, they're dressing these things up to the nines to present it to you in a beautiful way. Support the books. Yeah, Absolutely. this is one of those episodes that we could be doing this episode for me because yeah. I want more of these books to sell enough that they continue this library and that it's good for their for the Corbin family. Yeah, Totally. And we have two co two extra copies uh, to give out. So one is going to the kayfaber that promotes us the heaviest, the hardest, and the coolest. We don't know what that is. 
be nice about it. <laughs> and the other one is going to us, one of our biggest supporters at the King K Favor level. Uh, we'll figure it all out at, at the end of June. You know, I feel like that, that's a that's a good way to do that. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make. But I want to let you guys know that Jimmy and I are going to be at Heroes Con at the end of the this no no uh, in a, in a couple of weeks actually, uh, two weekends from now as of this recording. And we're going to bring all our stuff, man. Can't wait to meet you guys. It's always a good show uh, for comic book fans, and we always have a ball. Feels like we're just visiting another part of town. We're so familiar with that joint. Uh, and the end of July is going to be Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. That's going to be when uh, we're going to take a bunch of our comp copies that we've received from our publishers... And we're taking a bunch of our duplicate comics that we have laying around that we got in various digs or that you guys sent us um, and, you know, stuff that we already have. And we are going to dump those comics across town into the free little lending libraries all over the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, last year was the first time we did it. And so many of you uh, sort of joined the cause. You hashtagged us in a bunch of photos online, Instagram, Twitter, and we retweeted it and we plan on reposting that stuff. Again, this year, uh, it's a great way to introduce comics to new readership. We, you know, almost everybody encountered comics sort of by accident or just through, um, you know, it wasn't like you were pushing to, like, find a comic your first time. You just kind of, like, found one. And we're putting those comics in front of other people's faces and doing what we can to grow this readership. Um, like I said, though, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, can you tell the people what you have out there forthcoming? Street Angel Princess of Poverty is my next release. It'll be out uh, later this year from Image Comics, and it collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Scroll Alive, which is also out from Image. They just reprinted that book, so if you missed that, you can pick it up now. You can also find my work in Hulk Grand Design. There's a treasury-sized edition that has recently been published with the fluorescent green cover that you cannot miss. Tells the entire story of the history of the Incredible Hulk. Perfect for new Hulk fans or longtime readers. And The Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel uh, available wherever books are bought and sold. And you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can read my latest comics that are being serialized there weekly. 2023 is a big year, and we're expecting big things from the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus coming out in time for the holidays, so please support this book. It's going to be 504 page, yeah, a little over 500 pages. Uh, it's going to collect all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree that are out there. It's going to have 140 pages of extras, including lots of artwork that I've drawn exclusively for this book. Man, it's a real one-of-a-kind item, and I hope you uh, show up to support that. Also for the holiday season, X-Men Grand Design is coming back to print with the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. It's going to be a trade paperback that uh, contains all three X-Men Grand Design uh, volumes that, that I put together in one handy-dandy trade paperback volume. What The things I'm working on right now, though, man, uh, Red Room Crypto Killers, Season of Red Room Comics is coming out. There are two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there right now, the Anti-Social Network and Trigger Warnings. Crypto Killers is the third. First issue came out in May. Uh, second issue is forthcoming in June. And uh, each of these issues is completely self-contained. So if you see a Red Room comic out there in the wild, scoop it up, give it a shot. If you dig it, uh, grab another one. Uh, you might also find WYSIWYG out in the wild if, if, you, uh, if you're lucky. Jimmy, tell the people what else we have going on. Uh, subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All great ways to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Give them those marching orders, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.